Hey guys, welcome back to the lab. Today at the bench, I will be assessing and disassembling a brand new book. Um, that's actually an old book. It was published in 1890, but it is brand new to the lab. So I start out by doing some review of the assessment. I already went over this volume with the client, of course, to work up the estimate for the work. Uh, but I like to review um, each volume right before I start working on it so I know exactly what's going on. Again, it's fresh in my mind. And as you can see, the front cover is completely detached from this book. And the leather is worn at the corners. It's abraded, but it's overall in pretty good shape. There's not a lot of red rot on it at all. And if you'll take a look at this sewing down here at the tail of the book, uh, this kettle stitch looks really loose to me and I'm a little concerned about it. But I can't really get in there until I get the book apart. You can see here, this book is interesting because I'm not seeing a um, like overhanging textile lining. This volume is huge. And normally there's a piece of cloth stuck to the spine and I'm not seeing one. And you can see the front cover is like machine embossed and it has a family name on it. The client gave me permission to show the name. And there's a nice inscription in this book. Uh, this Bible was given to, I think it says Egbert A. and Jenny. I can't read her maiden name. Thompson, when they were married, June 12th, 1900, by Jane, I think it's W. Thompson, Egbert's mother. So obviously we will be keeping this paste down and in sheet combo with the fabric because it's obviously very important to the client. And now I'm going to flip the book over. You can see how large this book is. It's, it's huge. Um, you could see the first in band was completely detached from the book and there are pages loose. And then on the head of the book, you can see that this in band is also detached. And if I open the back cover, the only thing, so there's the paste down in sheet combo with that fabric at the joint. The only thing holding this volume together is, well, the cover to the volume is this piece of sewing thread. And so I will uh, have to cut that loose, which I'll do later in this episode. So you can see this is how the book opens. That in band is supposed to be attached. It's supposed to be glued on. And there's no support to these sections other than just the sewing because there is no fabric, um, as I mentioned earlier. Yes, please enjoy. Books shouldn't make any noise when they open and close, so I'll be addressing that with the spine linings that I'll be putting on this book. And here's a shot of the title page with a pamphlet that is stuck in this book. And I think, as far as I can tell, this is about an 1890. It was the last copyright on the list. So I'll just call it an 1890 version. As you can see, these are mass produced. And the pamphlet in this Bible is um, talking about different types of Bibles. And these are Bibles you can buy from the A.J. Holman um, and Company binder that made this book originally. And so I'm going to tuck that away for safekeeping in an envelope. I put all of my clients' um, kind of ephemera pieces that are in their books in an envelope with their name on it. So I don't lose them and they can have them back. So I'm going to pull the front cover for safety and set it aside. I'm going to put a piece of binders board on top so I don't catch any of the uh, paper in the text block and break it like accidentally. And then I'm going to flip this book over and put it on a uh, working board so that it maintains the curve of the shoulder of this book. And this is the thread that I need to probably cut. I am seeing if it will slide at all, and it won't. 
And there's an in-band that just was sitting there. It wasn't attached at all. And the second one is still slightly attached, so I'll deal with it in a minute. So this thread, I just want to make sure that um, it isn't already broken in the book. And it's not, so I'm going to cut it and try to remove it, but it won't slide. It's glued in, so I'm just going to cut the other side too. Just to get the spine leather and the back cover to separate from this book. And I'll be setting that aside also for safekeeping to work on in the next episode. And now I'm just assessing the loose pages at the beginning, or I should say the end of this book. So there's a few pages loose, there's a section loose. Um, you can see I had a hard time telling originally when handling this book because the paper pages are still flexible, like they don't break when they're bent, but if they are already folded, um, they break quite easily. And so this is what I would characterize as a brittle book, even though it's not super obvious um, if you're just handling it. So the second in band wouldn't um, come loose just manually, so I cut it loose with that paper backing, and that seems to be the only lining on this book. And that's not great, so I'm going to certainly address that And I'm trying to clean the threads, the sewing threads that extend out so I can adhere them back to the text block under a lining. And you can see the kettle stitches on the head and tail of this book, either end of it, um, the top, like the top and bottom are loose. And so I'm going to set this whole thing aside for now and think about what I want to do with it. And then I'm going to clean up these end bands so they can be reused. So these are really cool, and they are um, actually have board in them up under the woven like color section of the end band. But all of this paper is um, pretty loose, and it has to go anyway. So I'm going to try to remove as much material as I can from these end bands, both paper and animal glue, just so they adhere better um, when they go back on the book. And I don't want to press these um, like curve side down onto my bench and peel. Uh, normally I would if these were flat. Um, so I don't want to basically press that curve flat, but I will work with these right side up on the, on the bench because it won't damage that curve. So this is one of those um, trial and error kind of situations. And I'll use tweezers, I'll use a micro spatula. I don't wanna get these in bands wet. So if these were smaller um, and did not have, there's a piece of board in them, uh, I don't wanna get that wet. And I suspect also that this um, color in the woven part, like that red particularly, I suspect it will bleed if I get it wet. So normally I could like rehydrate this animal glue on this side and um, it would kind of re-gel or um, rehydrate and then I could just scrape it off as like kind of an animal glue sludge. But like I said, I'm afraid to get these wet. I think that is probably not worth the risk. And so um, this is going to take a little longer and it's a little more effort, but these end bands, the fabric on them is in really good shape and it's really, really thick. Like the, it, about an inch that extends out below, like that lighter colored part is um, 
thin, but it's strong and it's in great shape. It's like a really um, thin, maybe cotton canvas. And then the part um, above it is like really thick woven. I mean, they're both woven, but um, yeah, you can see there it's super thick and these are in great shape. They'll hold up to like manual scraping. And so that's what we're going to do. And as you can see, I can be pretty aggressive with this micro spatula and the fabric doesn't seem to be in any danger of being abraded or punctured. It's really tough. And like I said, it's in great shape. And I keep the workspace clean with that brush because if any of these chunks of animal glue wind up under um, this in band while I'm scraping, the micro spatula, which is pretty sharp, can actually catch those underneath and it will stab through this fabric. So there's the in band clean. And you can see again, the like that really thin area and the thicker band and then the band of color with that board inside and these Invans have a lot of dimensionality, like they're really thick, but they really add character to this book. I mean, they make it in a sense, you know, what the client is used to. And I would like to reuse them, even though they are um, thicker than what is best for this volume structurally, probably. So my thought, because these invans are so thick, is that maybe the bindery, because there wasn't an overhanging textile lining, um, was trying to use these as a textile lining like at the head and tail to support the text block and it's opening and closing um, because these are just so strangely thick. So that's just a guess on my part because there's just no reason for such a thick piece of material um, to kind of constitute an in-band. So now we're gonna work on the second end band and do the same thing. And as you can see, this end band um, has some damage. This was the end band that was at the tail of the book or the bottom if it's standing upright on a shelf. And because this end band had the weight of the book put on it at some point, probably um, when somebody opened or closed it by leaning it on this end band, um, it just snapped at some point. So I ask clients to store books this big, once I've worked on them, um, flat instead of upright on a bookshelf like you would normally store a book. These need to be stored flat like coffee table books um, because the weight of the paper is so heavy that it will pull loose from the, um, the boards, the covers, or the case. And it will negate um, what I've done. It will essentially re-break the book.
So you can see here on the back of the end bands, and it was like this on the first one, there's a lot of animal glue on the back of this end band. And it has, I mean, it hardens over time and becomes kind of crispy. And I would like to remove that animal glue, but again, I don't want to get this end band wet. And to remove it, I would probably have to get the end band at least damp. And so I think that it is, this end band is flexible enough to reuse as is, like it's not worth the risk. All right, well, I've got both end bands clean and the book taken apart. So next time I will be separating the spine leather piece from the back cover and continuing with this treatment. Thanks for tuning in this week to the first episode in this series as we get this book started. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys want to show the lab some love, you can subscribe and tune in every week. Thanks.